Corona Duopoly 3 MATLAB demo. But first we'll do a little recap with a graphical illustration of uh, Nash and Stackelberg equilibrium. Agent 1 is in red and Agent 2 is colored in blue. These contours here represent equal values of pi 1, which is the payoff of agent 1. Just for an example, let's assign specific values of pi 1 for each contour. So everywhere in this contour, outermost contour, pi 1 is 10. In this contour, pi 1 is 20 and so forth until uh, this small contour here, it's 70 and maybe the highest value of pi 1 is 90 at the center. Now suppose this is a specific action that A2 takes. How should A1 respond? If A1 responds with this action, then its payoff would be 10. If agent 1 responds with this specific action, its payoff would be 30. Here, its payoff would be uh, 50. And right here, its payoff would be 60. Then here, its payoff would be back to 40. And then here, it would be 20. So you see that the payoff for agent 1 is maximum here. That is where this horizontal line representing agent 2's action is tangential to one of these contours pi 1 equals c of agent 1's payoff. Therefore, this action is the best response of agent 1 to this specific action A2 of agent 2. Similarly, if this is a specific action of agent 2, then this would be the best response of agent 1, where this horizontal line representing A2's action is tangent to one of the contours of agent 1 by 1 equals constant. So, if we were to draw tangents to all these contours and join the points together where the horizontal lines are tangents to the contours, pi 1 equals constant, then that is the best response of agent 1, the best response curve or the best response function of agent 1 which is a function of agent 2's action, A2. So this is a function of agent 2's action, the best response curve of agent 1. And why did uh, we draw tangents everywhere? Uh, the justification is mathematical because this is um, the x-axis, which represents A1's action. And since we are maximizing pi 1 with respect to A1, the derivative uh, del pi 1 over del A1 must be equal to 0 uh, at the best responses. So that's why we are taking all these points where uh, the uh, contour pi 2 is tangent to the horizontal line. The derivative must be 0. So this is the best response curve of agent 1 as a function of the action of agent 2. In a similar manner, uh, we take uh, contours of uh, equal payoffs of agent 2 and draw vertical lines and locate the points where these vertical lines and the uh, contours of uh, equal payoffs pi 2 are tangent to one another and these are different best responses um, of agent 2 to B 
various actions taken by agent one. Joining all these points together, we get the best response curve BR2, which is a function of the action of agent one. And why do we uh, take vertical lines here and uh, look at the points where the vertical lines are uh, tangents to the contours? That's because note that this is agent two's action and del pi 2 over del a2 must be equal to 0, which means that the contours, the pair of contours must be vertical at the best response. At Nash equilibrium, the two agents are playing their best responses and therefore we take the point of intersection of the two best response curves and this is the point of intersection which is at Nash equilibrium. So this is the Nash equilibrium point. Here the payoff of agent 1 is horizontal and the payoff of agent 2 is vertical. Since agent 2 is the follower in this Stackelberg game, we know that agent 2 will always play its best response. So let's go ahead and draw the best response curve of agent 2. Agent 1, who is the leader now, will always try to maximize its payoff. Also note that agent 1 knows agent 2's best response curve which is this and so these are the contours of equal payoffs of agent 1 and we shall utilize these contours and this best response uh, curve of agent 2 to locate where a1 has its highest payoff let us go ahead and assign values of uh, pi 1 for each of these contours 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and 70. Now suppose A1 were to play this action. We know that A2 is uh, always, agent 2 is always playing its best response. So if agent 1's action is this, then the payoff of agent 1, pi 1 would be 10, this contour. For this action of agent 1, since this contour is uh, represents a payoff of 40, um, agent 1 would get a payoff of 40 here. And here, if it were to play this action, it would get a payoff of 60. Note that as we move along this direction, the payoff of agent 1 is increasing. And at this point, you see that the best response, this blue curve here, best response of agent 2 is tangent to one of the payoffs of agent 1. Now, what happens when we move further away from this point of tangency? Here, for this action, agent once payoff is 40, which is now reduced. It's lower than what it was here. And here, it reduces even further. The payoff here is 10 for this action. So we observe that this is the point where BR1 is tangent to one of the contours pi 1 equals constant. And as we move from the left, towards this point of tangency, pi 1 keeps increasing. But after we reach this point, as we move further along the same direction, pi 1 starts decreasing. Whence, this point of tangency represents the point where pi 1 is maximized. In other words, for this A1, 
uh, corresponding to this point of tangency, pi 1 is maximum. And that's the Stackelberg equilibrium point when agent 1 is the leader. I denote this as SE1. So, at the Stackelberg equilibrium point where agent 1 is the leader, the best response of agent 2 and contours of equal values of payoff 1 are tangents to each other. In a similar manner, if we consider a Stackelberg game where agent 2 is the leader and agent 1 is the follower, we first take the best response of the follower, agent 1, to agent 2's actions, A2. So this is, this red uh, line here is uh, the best response of agent 1. And we then locate where these contours of equal payoff of agent 2 now are tangent to this best response of agent 1. And this is the Stackelberg equilibrium point where agent 2 is the leader and agent 1 is the follower. This point. Now let's look at the MATLAB code. Just a remark. Agent 1 will be in blue now and Agent 2 will be in red. And all the contour plots will use the MATLAB default colors. This is a recap of the expressions for Kurno duopoly. X1 and X2 are the two uh, actions uh, of agents 1 and 2, uh, which are the quantities of a certain good that they produce. And the production costs are proportional to the quantities that they produce, lambda 1x1 and lambda 2x2. The total quantity available in the market is x, which is x1 plus x2. And the unit price of a good, P of x, price will be a function of the total quantity of the good available in the market and it goes down slightly as x increases, so it's alpha minus rho x. The payoffs, which are the profits of uh, the agents, are pi 1 is the unit price times the quantity produced by agent 1, which is uh, the uh, total revenue uh, obtained by agent 1, and minus its manufacturing or production cost, that's pi 1. Likewise, pi 2 is p times x2 minus lambda 2 x2. And these are the MATLAB lines of code corresponding to all the expressions for the price, unit price, pi 1, pi 2, best response of 1, which we have derived earlier, best response curve of 2, the Nash equilibrium point, and the Stackelberg equilibrium with agent 1 as leader. And these are the values of alpha, rho, lambda 1, and lambda 2 that I've used. This is the main program. And this is the function to compute the payoffs pi 1 and pi 2 uh, of agent 1 and agent 2 and the price. Best response of agent 1s and agent 2. We know that the best responses are straight lines. And this function computes the Nash equilibrium point. I've used the same function to plot six different uh, uh, figures. So this is the code for figure one. 
So these contours represent equal values of pi 1 and so this is the best response of agent 1. Zooming in, we can see that at the best response, the contours are horizontal. This is the code to produce figure 2. And this is figure 2. Uh, these are contours for equal value of pi 2. And this red line here is the best response of agent 2. Zooming in, we see that everywhere in the best response of agent 2, the contours of equal payoff pi 2 are vertical. Uh, for some strange reason, they're not exactly vertical uh, here, but I suspect that could be some artifact of uh, the mesh plots in MATLAB. But for all practical purpose, let's assume that uh, this is, at all these points, the contours are uh, vertical. This is the code to produce figure 3. And this is figure 3, which shows the Nash equilibrium point. Zooming in, this is the Nash equilibrium point, and uh, it's at the intersection of the best responses. And here, uh, pi 1 and pi 2 are horizontal and vertical. This is the code for figure 4. And this is figure 4 where agent 1 is the leader and agent 2 is the follower. So this is the Stackelberg equilibrium point. Here we can see that uh, the payoff of agent 1, um, this contour here, is tangent to the best response of agent 2. This code produces figure 5, uh, the Stackelberg equilibrium, where agent 2 is now the leader. So these contours represent constant values of agent 2's payoff, pi 2, and this is the best response of agent 1. This is the Stackelberg equilibrium point. At the Stackelberg equilibrium, the best response of agent 1 and the contours of equal uh, values of pi 2, the payoff of agent 2, are mutually tangent to one another. Lastly, this is the code for figure 6. And this is what figure 6 looks like. Here we have juxtaposed the Nash equilibrium point with the two Stackelberg equilibrium points with agent 1 and agent 2 as leader.